How's it going guys? In this new mini series, we're going to create a simple PHP application that's going to integrate with Yahoo's Finance API. What we're going to do is we're going to create this simple website about stock streaks and um, basically all it's going to be is a table and um, we are going to find the biggest losers and the biggest winners um, in terms of, of streaks. So for example, um, if Microsoft here um, was going up three days in a row, so we're checking um, the final closing price. If it went up three days in a row, the streak here is going to show plus three days. And to the right, we're also going to show the move percentage. So over those three days, um, what was the percentage that it went up? And the same goes for losers. Um, for example, Yahoo here. Um, so for four, the last four days, the closing price was going down every day. It's on a four day losing streak. And on the right, we're going to show the move percentage. Over those four days, how much did it go down? Right now, this page is just built with static HTML. We're going to need to um, use PHP in order to bring this to life. And then the final step, which I'm going to do in this project, is I'm going to integrate data tables. So when you click on the streak header right here, you can alternate by putting the biggest losers at the top. And if you click it again, then it's going to show the biggest losers at the top. So it's going to be really easy to use to find the biggest um, winners and losers. And the same goes for the uh, streak move percentage. So we're going to work with the Yahoo Finance API in order to fetch all of this data. Um, the Yahoo API is nice because it's free and it seems to have um, quite a lot of data in it. But the documentation is really poor for it. I basically had to just scour the internet and find different examples in order to make my API request and get the data that I wanted. Uh, but I have it working right now, so um, we'll look at that shortly. We're going to use Laravel um, for the PHP framework. In order to do this, um, you could use any PHP framework to do it. I'm just using Laravel because I'm familiar with it. And I'm going to try not to put too much focus on Laravel in, you know, in this series, but just writing good PHP. So my initial step when um, creating this project is before I create, a, create all the architecture for this and things like classes and interfaces and whatnot, the first step is I want to see if, um, if I can pull down the data and if the data that I pull down um, has the data that I need. So let's just go over to um, our routes file here. So you'll notice everything is happening within the routes file right now. Um, architecturally, this will be very bad. Um, it would be much better to use an MVC use controllers, use models, and whatnot. However, um, in this case, um, at least in the beginning, I just want to see if I can get the data from Yahoo. And if it has um, the specific data that I need, um, and the to be precise, the data that I need is going to be the closing price and the closing price's date. So that's what I'm going after here. So we're setting up our first route, which is fetch and fetch is going to have a query string appended to it. So if we go over to the browser here, you'll see my URL is stocks.dev. We're working locally. Um, the path is fetch and then we're appending a query string stock equals MSFT. MSFT um, stands for Microsoft. And if we scroll down here towards the bottom, um, you'll see a field which has the date and also um, the last trade price, if I can find that here. Um, you'll see last trade with time, June 13 dash uh, 4123. So what I'm thinking is I can run a cron um, once per day, and I'll run it uh, after um, after the stock exchanges have closed. So maybe something like 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. Um, Eastern time, and we can see on June 13 here the last. Um, the last trade was 41.23. So note this is the last trade. So if I ran that cron and we fetch this data in the middle of the trading day at like 2 p.m., this might be different. So I'm thinking um, it's going to be important to run this uh, cron at a specific time after the exchanges have closed. And if I go over to Yahoo right here, um, it's Saturday right now. So um, this is June 13. Uh, it's June 14 as I'm recording this. And you can see the last trade, um, at least in the, the working hours. There's also some after hours trading. But in the um, usual trading hours, the last trade was 41.23 on June 13. And that matches up with what we have um, in our API here, June 13. 
and 41.23. So as long as we fetch this data um, after the markets have closed um, in an evening, we should be able to get accurate data of that um, trading day and the final um, trading price. So in a future video, what we're going to do is we're going to store this in a database. So for Microsoft, on June 13, we're going to store um, this closing price. And we're also going to store that for June 14, June, June 15, June 16, etc. in order to get all of the data necessary um, in order to make a streak. So let's go over to the code here. And remember, um, we don't care about architecture in this first video. We, what we want to do is we just want to make sure that we can um, grab the data that we need and we want to test it for a few different stocks. So we set up our first route. The path is fetch and we are going to grab the query string stock. Uh, stock. You saw that right here. Um, so this is going to be MSFT in our current example. And the next thing we're doing is we're creating a cache key. So um, we are going to, once we fetch something from the API, um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cache it. So if we got something, we're going to cache it. That way, as we're testing our application, um, we're not making a new API request every time for the exact same data. What that's going to do is it's going to create too many uh, API requests to Yahoo. Our IP is going to get blocked, or we might reach a maximum quota, and we won't be able to make any queries for uh, until the next day. So. The first thing we want to do is, if we did get a response for our API request, we want to cache that. And then as we continue to work with it, we're going to be grabbing the data from our cache, not from Yahoo's API. So the first thing we need to do is we need to set up that cache key. I want the cache key to be unique. So um, the first thing we're doing is putting in stock data here as a string. So that's the resource type. And then after that, we are going to append on the date. So we want this st uh, stock data for a specific date um, because this cron is going to be run every day. And then finally, um, we're going to append on the stock. Um, in this case, it was MSFT. So we're just uh, creating a unique string here. And um, for each API request we make for a different stock, um, there's going to be uh, a different cache created for each one of those. The next thing we do is we pass um, we pass this key in to Laravel's cache get. So all frameworks like Code Igniter, Symphony, etc., they all have their um, ways of caching. So we're going to pass that key into cache get, and we're going to see if there's anything in the cache for this. And if there's nothing in the cache, or there is something in the cache, but um, that cache item is expired, then this should return null. It will return either null or false, and it's going to let us know we don't have anything for that cache. All right. So if we didn't have anything in the cache, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to make that API request. So the first thing we're doing is we're building up our RESTful URL here. Um, the resource is being sent to query.yahooapis.com. We're using version 1 of the API. And you can just see here, let's make this a little bit bigger. Um, you can see what I'm passing in here. Um, we are using um, YQL, which is Yahoo Query Language. We're using that um, within our um, RESTful URL we're creating here. Select star from yahoo.finance.quotes. We're symbol in and then the stock right here. We can also pass in a comma separated um, values of stock. So you can check multiple stocks at the same time. Um, in this case, we're just passing in um, MSFT for Microsoft. But you could also pass in uh, a comma separated value of stocks in order to make less API requests. We need to run URL and code on, on that. And then finally, we're appending the rest of it. The format we want is JSON. And there's a few more things here. I got this from the examples I found. Diagnostics is set to true, and I'm actually not sure what this last one does, but if I leave it off, it doesn't work. Um, so just um, add the rest of this on here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make the API request with file get contents, passing in the URL, and we're putting this in a try catch statement. If there are any errors, we're going to catch the exception, and then we are going to store um, the error within the cache instead. Um, we're grabbing the error right here, and we can get the error message with E and then arrow get message. 
So after we fetch this resource, we're now going to put it in our cache with cache put, and we use our cache key and the resource that we grabbed. Uh, that we grabbed. This is uh, in JSON, so we're storing JSON uh, within our cache, and I'm storing it for a day, so 60 minutes times 24 hours. The last thing we're doing is we're pretty printing the data. I have a simple helper function for this uh, right here. So this is really simple, just echoing out a pre-tag. And then we're going to run print R on that. And when we do that, we can see it um, really easy in the browser, um, just like you're seeing right now. So we can test this on a few other different stocks. Let's change MSFT here to Yahoo's. And you'll see that now we are getting um, all of the data for Yahoo. We can also pass in Google stock here. And you'll see that that's working well for Google. Uh, we can scroll down to find um, that particular field we're interested in, June 13, and we have the closing price. So everything is looking good so far. So that's going to wrap up everything for this video. I think in the next episode what we'll do is we'll try to get a list of the 500 most popular stocks, and then we'll run this code on all of them, and we will store, um, store the data that we want into the database.